This is now our fourth video looking at finding probabilities using the standard normal distribution. The first one we're asked to find the probability that z is between 1.25 and 2.16. In the video we'll look at different ways in which you can find these. Some of the techniques you might like, some you might have a better idea on. So let's start with this one. And what we'll do, we'll place these two up here. So we'll put this one, this is going to be 2.16, this will be 1.25. So we're interested now in the shaded area to the left of 2.16 and to the right of 1.25. And this will give us now this area right here and therefore the probability that Z is between these two values. In general, what we can say is the probability of Z, and we can write it here, if we have the probability of Z greater than some value A, yet in turn less than some value B, we can say that the area trapped between those, or the probability, is phi of b minus phi of a. So we'll take these two positive values here and we'll simply find now phi of 2.16 and subtract away from that phi of 1.25. So all we'll do is look those up in a table. So 2.16 minus phi of 1.25 and that will give us that area. If you kind of want to look at that slightly differently, what we can do now is just draw up two standard normal curves. So here are two standard normal curves, and we will look at the area that we're concerned with. So the first one, what we'll have now, standard normal, this will be the point now, 2.16. The area trapped under the curve to the left of this is given as phi of 2.16. So phi of 2.16. If we now draw another normal, what we'll have is this point right here. This point will be 1.25. So the area trapped under the curve to the left, which is the probability, is given as phi of 1.25. Quite clearly, we're interested in the sliver between the two. Therefore, if we find phi of 2.16 and subtract away phi of 1.25, we got this small part right here. So all we need to do is go to our tables, and in a question you would write it down. I'm just going to push this through a calculator. So here's phi of 2.16, so we've got 0.9, and then what have we got? 0.9846, uh, and then we need to subtract away from this phi of 1.25. There's 1.25, so let's grab that up, and phi of 1.25 is going to give us 0.8944. So what do we wind up with then? 0, 0.9, 0, 0.2. So let's put this on. This is now equal to 0, 0.0902. 0, so the probability that Z is between these two positive values is 0, 0, 0.0902. Okay, let's look at the next one. This next one, we can look at this three different ways. Firstly, we'll look at a very superficial way of seeing it. Secondly, we'll uh, do it as an area. And then thirdly, we'll split it up into two areas. So what we'll do, we'll take a value. Now, this is going to be uh, positive 2.38. This is going to be negative 1.67. So let's put these values on here. So what we're interested in now is the area trapped under the curve to the left of positive 2.38 and to the right of negative 1.67. So it's this area right here. Okay, so if I shade this off, if you want the most superficial way of looking at this now, all we need to do is phi of 2.38, so we'll write this here, phi of 2.38 minus 1 minus phi of 1.67. If you've seen the videos prior to this, you'll see that that makes sense. If you want to think about it slightly differently, though, we can look at this now as two different areas or one complete area. So let's draw these up, and what we'll do, we'll draw two standard normals. So top one, I'm going to do now the probability that Z is less than positive 2.38. So let's put that there. This is the area we're interested in. 2.38 this now area is given as phi of 2.38 if we now consider this area 
And what I'm going to do, instead of writing negative 1.67, what we're going to do is go around the other side and write 1.67. What we need to do is take this area away from this one. And quite clearly, this area right here is to the right of 1.67. The area that we've got here now is going to be phi of 1.67. So, our understanding that the area trapped under the curve is 1, this area right now is going to be 1 minus phi of 1.67. As you can see, when you add these two together now, what we're going to have, or I should say, subtract them away. When we take this one and subtract away this small sliver right here, we're going to end up with this scenario. So this is a very sort of superficial, almost algorithmic way of looking at things. Yet this way, hopefully you can see that's one particular route. Alternatively, you can see this now as follows. And depending on which method you prefer or how you've been taught or which book, you might be shown something slightly different. So let's look at another way that you could view this. If we now consider that this one right here, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to have this point, and again, I'm going to go around the back and look at this as 1.67. What we've got here is this area right now. And I'm going to leave everything the other side of it now. And we know that this area right here is going to be, and let's see if we can, uh, in fact, we'll just write it on. We know that this area is going to be 0 0.5. If we now look at the other one where we've got 2 0.38, so this is going to be 2.38, what we've got now is this area. So what I'm doing is putting this area right here back to back with this area right here. We know that the where we've got the mean of 0, to the left, this is equal now to 0 0.5, and this is equal to 0 0.5. So what I could do now is as follows. I could say phi of 1.67 plus phi of 2.38 minus a half, so minus 0.5, and then minus a half, or essentially just minus 1. And you'll see either way around, we're going to get the same value. So this is one way of looking at it. This is a superficial way, and this is looking at it now as two areas that you're cutting off. This area corresponds to this, and this one corresponds to this, and you're just adding them together. So let's just whack this for a calculator anyway, rather than uh, talking too much about it. So what we need then, let's grab our calculator. We need now phi of 2.38, so let's grab that up. Where's 2.38? Just there. So double nine, uh, so double nine one three, so point double nine one three. Then we're going to subtract away from this 1 minus, and then we're going to do phi of 1, what's it, 1.67. So let's find phi of 1.67, which is just there. So there's 1.67, and this will be now 0.9525. And what do we end up with now on that? Uh, that's going to give us 9438. So let's go and put that on. So this is now going to be... Uh, 0 0.9438. If we go down and look at this method, okay, let's just grab this one up. What we've got here then, um, we can just slightly rearrange this. If I just go back into here, what I'm going to do now on this part, as you can see, it's giving you exactly the same calculation. Um, if you look at how those brackets were, it gives us the same calculation. All we're going to have is this. And as you can see, we get exactly the same thing. But as stated, those brackets should hopefully show quite clearly that you're getting the same thing. So entirely up to you on how you want to look at it. Different books present it in different ways. OK, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's look at this one. Now this one, this one's uh, slightly, uh, well, it's, it's fairly straightforward because we can use symmetry again. So let's grab this one, and what we'll have then, we'll have 0 0.85, which we'll put just there, and then 0 0.21, uh, sorry, 2.16, and these are both negative. So let's try and get that straight. So we're interested in this now 
from negative uh, white isn't going to work is it let's put this on so this one is going to be negative 0 0.85 and this is going to be negative 2.16 if I went round the other side of this curve now what I would see is the following and you might want to look at it in this way again it's entirely up to you what we can have this time is as follows so here's the uh, standard normal uh, if I don't run out of tablet space, let's redraw that. I just went off the end of my tablet. That's right. What we've got now, if we were around the other side, we would see two lines. We would see this line, and this would be positive 2.16, and then we'd have this one right here, which is going to be positive 0 0.85. We're interested in this small part between the two, and quite clearly, all we need to do on this one is phi of 2.16 minus phi of 0 0.85 and that will give us the area trapped under the curve between the two as you can see by symmetry this is exactly the same area so if you want to think about symmetry as stated I always like to walk around the back and look what it would be like if it was positive so we're interested in this part right here and this is exactly the same as saying phi of 2.16 minus phi of 0 0.85 so let's push out through the calculator and let's get a table up so what we want then is phi of 2.16 and 0 0.85. So where's our 2.16? 2.16 is going to give us 9, uh, what have we got? 9, 8, 4, uh, so 4, 6, isn't it? 9, 8, 4, 6, I can hardly read that. Um, and then we want the 8, 5. So let's grab up 8, 5. Where's 8, 5? 8, 5 is down here. So we need to subtract away from that. Let's move that over. 8.5 is going to give us now 0 0.08023. There we go. And that's going to give us now 0 0.1823. So let's go back there. So what we get then is 0. Uh, let's write it as 0 0.1823. So that one's nice and straightforward. Just look at it in terms of the symmetry. All we've got here, if you wanted to do it with symmetry, you could just drop down a line and put this point on here and put this point on here. It's entirely up to you. You know this point is going to be the 2.16. You know this point is going to be the 0 0.85. And you want that between them. Okay? So that's looking at symmetry. I prefer to look at it around the other way. It's entirely up to you. Though. Okay, let's look at the final one. Now this one, what we're looking for is the probability of Z being between negative and positive 1.57. We can be uh, a bit cheeky with this one and just use symmetry. So if we consider, let's put 1.57 just here. All we're going to have are exact two exact same um, areas. If we think this is symmetric, so uh, let's try and make, uh, give or take. We're going to have this one and we're going to have this one. All we need to do to think about this, or I say all we need to do, one particular method that you can do is simply now take the area from here, which is going to be 1.57, and take it back to this point. So if I get two lots of this, now we know that this area from our previous work is simply given to be phi of 1.57 minus 0 0.5 because the area from this side now backwards is equal to 0 0.5 so to find the probability that z is greater than the modulus of 1.57 or between negative and positive all we need to do are two lots of this that's the area so we do two lots okay so all we're going to do is set that up in a calculator or you might just want to say two lots of that minus one um, entirely up to you on how you view it so let's get 1.57 so where's my table? 1.57 just there. So what we're going to do then is set this up and we are going to have two lots of phi of 1.57 which is going to be 0 0.9, uh, where are we, 9418 and then we're going to subtract away from that now the 0 0.5. Okay, and that will give us the value. So what do we end up with? Double eight three six. So let's put that on. So we end up now with 0 0.8836. So there we go. There are a different range of techniques. I'm not suggesting you need to use them. I'm not suggesting that they're the best. If you've got your own way, please do use it. But there's certainly some different ways that you can look at finding the probabilities when we've got Z between two values, A and B.